The chips are stacked, the cards are on the felt, and the dealers are ready for the doors to open. It is poker's most anticipated day of the year. This is the table. The table where it all happened. Where nine of us sat down last November, and I became the world champion of poker. This is the table. The table where dreams come true. Here we go again. This is what we came for. It's time to rock and roll, isn't it? 7,000 strong have come to the Rio hoping to be him. Yes. This is it. And dreaming of a $9 million payday. Yeah. Tell me, wins the championship. But the journey ahead is long, filled with peril. Don't do it. Ah. Ah. Did this really happen to me? Passion. Clubs, punish him one time. And yes. pure ecstasy. Oh. But in the end, there can be only one. This is the table. And the journey to get to this table begins now. Fortune's faithful have returned. May you rock, guys. May you roll. Eager for the world's greatest poker tournament. Let's show it time. It's day one of the main event, and as the masses move in, a future world champion looms. World Series of Poker. Hi, everybody. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad, and we are excited to be back for the biggest event of the year, the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. An incredible number of players have come from all over the world to the Rio, making this the second largest field ever. A mind-blowing 7,319 entrants. Ready to take it down. And today there are several bracelet winners and well-known pros as well as two members from last year's November 9. Hello. Welcome back. Each is hoping to make it to the final table and ultimately take home the nearly $9 million top prize. And now to kick things off is 2004 world champion Greg Raymer. All right, we all know why we're here. We're all here because we want one of these. So let's shuffle up and deal. Lana, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Greg Raymer just gave me chills. <laughs> well, you better brace yourself, Norman, because at the feature table today, none other than Mike the Mouth Matizzo. Maybe I'm getting sick. <laughs> I might not win many pots today, but I'll keep you all entertained. Bracelet winner Jason Lester is all too familiar with Mike's brand of entertainment. I was looking forward to a nice, quiet day one. Well, you and know. I get I got microphones and cameras and Mike Mattisau. Whee! It's time <laughs> for our first step on the long road to that bracelet. No doubt it will be a tumultuous yet fun road with plenty of excitement along the way. Everyone begins their day with 30,000 chips. Jason Lester is under the gun on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, 7-5 offsuit, and he will not play. Lon, needless to say, I am stoked! <laughs> Action on Alex Carr, a six off. How old is this guy? He's actually 22. Yeah, and I'm Brad Pitt's body double. A raise from under the gun plus two to 250 with a six suited for Mike Mattiso. Mattiso's first eight World Series caches were final tables, two of them bracelets. Mattiso comes along from the cutoff position. You see the cut next to Mike's name indicates that. Gerhard Maurer now from Munich, Germany. We can only see the ten of clubs. Looks like he missed whole card oh. cam training. He makes the call to Alan Carter in the big blind. Five tray off. He attended the same high school in Texas oh. as Doyle Brunson. He makes the call oh. too. Four players in our first hand at this main event. I'm tingling. The flop four, queen six. Mattiso and Carr with the same hand, a pair of sixes. Carter with an up and down straight draw. He'll be first to act. The deuce or a seven gives him a straight. He bets 600. Yeah, 600. Carr now folds oh. his pair of sixes. Mattiso calls with his pair of sixes. Moore has got a fold. He doesn't even know what his second card is. Oh. He does fold, so it'll be heads up. 42-year-old Carter's straight draw against 42-year-old Mattisau's pair of sixes. Turn card is a five. Carter pairs up, but he's still behind. You see by the yellow border around his name, he's next to act, right. and he bets 1,050. I'd bet two with a draw and a pair. Mattisau makes a raise, testing the novice. 
You know, if Carter re-raises it here, the mouth might go bye-bye. Carter makes a call for 1950 more, and they'll see a river card. It's a king of hearts. Matasso with the check mark with his pair of sixes. Carter, first to act, he checks. Carter shuts it down. And that provides an opening for Matasso. The mouth bets, and Carter folds immediately. Oh, I thought Matasso might check there. Not sure if he was value betting or bluffing. Mike takes the pot, and the main event is underway. Ever since the Sonic Moneymaker boom, we've seen a fresh face win the main event each year. But it's just as predictable that a big-name pro will make a deep run. Norman, last year, your main man, Phil Ivey, took us on a fantastic voyage. But perhaps no pro is more consistent than Mike Matisseau. Love him or loathe him, Mike the Mouth makes lots of noise at the main event. In the last decade, Matiso has had four top 100 finishes, including two final tables. We used to wait for the inevitable blow-up, now we watch to see if he can go deep again. When it comes to the big one, Matiso is not just good theater, he's just really good. Yeah, hello. Okay, I'm just a feature table where all the cameras are. Oh, yeah? Okay, we go find it, bye. Too many players on their cell phones, Lon? It's day one of the main event, no cell phone calls. Let's go to table two and find 1988 main event runner-up Eric Seidel sitting on pocket aces under the gun after the flop against 23-year-old Matt Groves, ace jack suited. Groves under the gun plus one. Seidel six checks the flop. Groves thinking maybe he can outsmart. Eric bets 675. Well, the flop missed Groves, but he figured it missed Seidel too, so he tried to take down the pot right there. Seidel just calls. Turn card, deuce of hearts. That keeps Groves alive, putting a gut shot straight draw on the board. Seidel checked again. And Groves will bet it again, 16.50. Bluffing is habit forming. Seidel with the aces just calls, being cautious. The river card now a seven. Eric's aces hold up, but that card increases straight possibilities. Seidel checks. Groves 38, reaching, 38-25 this time. Groves is going to try to sell his story one more time. Eric looks wary, but calls. You probably win. He does. Seidel played his pocket aces very gingerly after the flop. Indeed, that was a dangerous board, and Seidel knew exactly what to do with those aces. So a nice pot early on for the eight-time bracelet winner. He's not the only person in the field with multi-bracelet credentials. There's Barry Shulman. He has two now after winning the WSOP Europe main event. 2009 was a good year for the Shulman family as his son Jeff made the November 9. Barry's got a long way to go to catch up with six-time bracelet winner T.J. Cloutier, though. TJ tied for ninth all-time in bracelets, and he's also written five poker instructional books. Right behind him on the all-time list, five-time bracelet winner Ted Forrest with pocket eights and short stacked. He's in trouble right now against the pair of tens of Laurie Hilton after the flop. Forrest bet 1,000. Hilton raises Ted all in, and he makes the call. Hilton, a former ESPN graphics technician. There's hope for us all. Ted needs help. Unless I catch an eight, I think we're about done. <laughs> As a rule, I never go all in in the middle of a massage. I oh, keep the massage going. going. There's an eight. Hilton drawing dead. Ted Forrest will stick around. Yes. The river card, and wow. <laughs> he piles it on with quad eights. <laughs> that is very lucky. I told you to stop the massage. <laughs> Everybody at this table is very lucky to be here. Me. Ted will need more than luck to rebuild his stack and also win a weight loss bet he has with his buddy Mike Matisseau. Forrest is 25 pounds lighter. If he loses another 20, Mike will owe him $2 million, putting the mouth in a pretty bad spot. Wow. Well, speaking of position, let's take a look at the breakdown of position at this nine-handed table. Preflop, under the gun, or UTG is first to act followed by plus one, plus two, and plus three. Then comes the hijack and cutoff seats, which are just before the dealer button. The button and the blinds are last to act pre-flop, and of course, post-flop, the blinds act first, and the button acts last. Yeah, life is good, dude. I cashed twice in like two years, and life is still good. Indeed, Matisseau is in a two-year World Series slump. Hold it over to Jason Lester. He lays it down. On the button is Alex Carr. Carr looks down. Jack, nine of hearts. He attended Eastern Nazarene College in Massachusetts. I believe they are the rambling wreck. <laughs> he raises to 600. I want to play pots. I'm about ready to raise. That's what I'm about ready to do. Queen Jack off suit for Mike in the small blind. Actually, on day one, the mouth doesn't play a lot of pots. He generally sits back and won't take a lot of chances. 
Mike made the call. Moore in the big blind. Queen Jack off suit also makes the call for 400 more. The flop, 9-8 Queen, Mattiso and Moore, both with a pair of Queens and a gut shot straight draw. Carr with a pair of nines and the same gut shot. Mattiso first to act, that's a thousand. Mattiso and Moore with the same hand, but of course Moore with position on the mouth. And he makes the call as well. Now to Carr. Carr, I believe, has an 11.30 curfew tonight, so he's still okay. He makes the call. All three pay to see the turn card. It's a 10. All three with a queen high straight. What are the chances of that? That's amazing. Mattiso checked. Actually, we just checked our statistical archives. It's the first time in the history of the main event three players have made a queen high straight on the turn on day one. Moore bets 3,000. Carr will come along. This could be the greatest check I ever made in my entire life. None of these players has a redraw to a club flush. Just checking to induce a bluff, not a bet and a call. This is a tough call for Mike. He doesn't even have the nuts straight. Somebody else could have a flush, and the mouth doesn't like playing big pots on day one. Why they're playing really good or really bad, I'm going to find out in a minute. Mike lays it down. So Carr and Moore will see a river card, another 10. Moore first to act. All in. And he moves all in for almost 9,000. Tough call here for Carr. I call. Guess not. And they'll chop up Mattisau's chips. Flush. No flush. Mike Mattisau's tortured. Oh, Mike's sick to his stomach over that one. I flopped it. Mike the Mouth playing Sweet. bad and lying about his hand. Actually, if I were Mike, I would have folded too. Oh, well, that will make him feel a lot better. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm either... The best I could possibly get is half. You have to fold. <laughs> I have to fold. This is one long, 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 long tournament. And we're just getting started.